What's up guys? So I am at the car place. Need to get my need to get some shit done on my car. And I uh I picked this place solely on the fact that it's close to the Starbucks normally work out. Um yeah, I could have probably called and searched around for a better price, but this is the the way I looked at it was if I'm able to leave the car here and walk over to Starbucks and get some work done and however long it takes them to, to do the work on the car that regardless of the price, it's it's going to end up being a better investment for me because I'll be able to go get some work done. So obviously, I don't want to be uh, stuck waiting for it or even have to have the hassle of having someone k come pick me up or anything like that. So uh, I set an appointment at 11. It's it's exactly 11 right now. So I'm going to walk in, figure out what, uh, what the timetable is going to be, and then walk over to, to Starbucks. My yeah. Uh, my caffeine consumption's been a little out of control lately, to be honest with you. I uh, already had some G Fuel this morning. Now I'm going to go to Starbucks while I work, have my usual coffee, the Grande Pike, which I think, it's hard to really say, track the trailer about to run me over. It's hard to say exactly uh, how much caffeine's in the Starbucks Grande Pike. Uh, but I think it's right around 300 milligrams of caffeine. I've already had a scoop of G Fuel, the lemonade. I love that lemonade flavor. So, pretty much before noon, I'll be at 450 milligrams of caffeine because there's about 150 milligrams in a scoop of G Fuel. Uh, but I won't have any the rest of the day, so that's not too crazy. Um, but I will say that I think I need to to start uh, getting a little bit, I don't know, I, I don't really necessarily feel like I need to lower the caffeine intake, um, because I don't see any like negative effects of it. I think it's more so just getting out of the habit of drinking so much coffee. Like, it's not even something, it's, it's almost just like, exactly, it's a habit. It's, I wake up in the morning, and I'll uh, make some coffee, and it's, it's weird how it started out to where it was like I was only drinking maybe a, a cup and a half, two cups of coffee at most in the morning to where I'm at now where it's like almost like three cups minimum in the morning. And it, it's just as I've been getting better coffee, more coffee, I just get in like love with the, the coffee I'm drinking. It's like I get in love with the coffee I'm drinking so it's like I just want to drink more and more of it. But then... What happens is I do that in the morning, really early in the morning when I wake up, when I'm working, when, uh, you know, I might not actually need it. You know, I might not come, I wake up, I'm pretty energized in the morning, so it's not like I, I necessarily need the coffee to, to wake me up or anything. Uh, but what happens is I, I just drink it out of habit, drink a, a bunch of it, a shitload of it, and then mid-afternoon when it comes time to go to the gym, and uh, I actually am feeling a little bit run down, a little bit tired, need a little pick-me-up. It's like, oh shit, man, I don't really want that much caffeine because I've already had a bunch in the morning. So, it is something I'm going to kind of monitor. It's like, a, I don't want to say a New Year's resolution, but something I do want to monitor in 2017, just kind of slowly bring my caffeine consumption down. I say that as I'm walking into Starbucks. So last week when I did the upper body workout here in the gym at my housing complex. A couple things happened. One, I got a cool response. Uh, I got a lot of emails from, especially people in my newsletter, asking me if I could do a lower body version of that. Because essentially, what the, if you didn't see the video, essentially what it was is I did a complete upper body workout in here with just dumbbells and the basic cable machine. So, I got asked if I could do a lower body version. And I mean, I can, I can see why a lot of people would want that because essentially what, what, what it is is a workout you can do when you're traveling. If you're, cause a lot of, ho this is a, essentially what a lot of hotel gyms are. This is exactly what hotel gyms are. You have a little bit of cardio equipment. You got dumbbells up to 50 pounds. And then you have a, a basic cable machine. High pulley, low pulley, it does have a leg extension and I think I could probably do leg curls, like a standing leg curl on that. So you do have that option as well. 
But that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a workout with just the dumbbells and just the cable machine. And it's gonna be lower body. And I have a pretty good workout plan, so I'm excited. And, well, the, and the second, second part of this is that I actually had a lot of fun doing that workout. Um, obviously, it's not very conducive to powerlifting, what I, my, my main goal is training-wise. But, uh, you know, it's, it's fun. And it's kind of cool to, to change things up a little bit. And I got a killer pump that day. My chest was, was actually sore, which is, which is crazy because I normally don't really even get sore from, from training all that much. So it was fun. So today's workout is going to be dumbbells and cable machine only. Let's get after it. I got my G Fuel this morning. One scoop of blood orange and I also put five grams of creatine monohydrate in there. Dumbbell squat snatches are so fun. I love doing them. I haven't done them in a long time. But uh, I figured it'd be a good first movement. Um, only had 50 pound dumbbells, so uh, it's not like I could go very heavy. And it's not something I wanted to do a ton of reps with because it would be very fatiguing. Um, it was kind of just like an explosive movement. I did uh, four sets of three. Just get, uh, get the blood flowing, get a little explosive. And uh, kind of just as like my last part of the warm up slash first introductory exercise and uh, so did that. Now I'm gonna take two 50 pound dumbbells and do five sets of 10 front rack, um, especially front squats with dumbbells and then uh, go from there. As a side note, I've been listening to podcasts a lot when I'm training. I don't know why, I used to always either A, not listen to anything and just kind of stay in my own head and just focus on, on what I'm doing or uh, B, of course, listen to music like most people. But I don't know, just like the last like two weeks I've been listening to podcasts from training. And uh, I like it because it's like, it, it's just kind of like, kind of, it, it doesn't hype me up so much. I feel like when I'm listening to music, I get overly hyped up. And uh, really when you're training, you only really want to be like pumped up and excited during your set. And then immediately after your set, you want to relax. You want to calm down, get focused and not stay hyped up, not stay elevated throughout the entire workout, because that's an easy way to get burned out and then you get overly tired and you end up having shitty workouts at the end of the day because you just, you burn out too quick. Uh, not saying I necessarily did that, I don't think I did. I think it was more of music in general is, uh, is great and I love training music, but then you get to the point where you start changing songs all the time and. You're getting ready to do a set and you're mentally focused and then it's like a commercial on Pandora and you're like, oh fuck, well I can't do my set now, I gotta wait till the commercial's over. Or you're getting ready to do a set and then a song comes on you don't like and then you're like, ah. I just took that, took that issue right away. So, I don't know, maybe try it. Maybe try listening to a podcast. Maybe listen to the Absolute Strength Podcast. Speaking of which, those of you who have not listened to my last episode, it was with Lane Norton, Dr. Lane Norton might be the best episode I've done so far. It's just, it, it was a really cool, really cool episode. Um, go check that one out. If you don't listen, if you're gonna listen to any of them, go listen to the last one, episode 23 with Lane Norton.
So when you're dealing with not having heavy weight, so like I said, I only have 50 pound dumbbells here, that uh, I wanted to do some form of a Romanian deadlift. Well, just having 50 pound dumbbells is, I mean, wouldn't really be very heavy. So one way to make the movement harder is to do single leg RDLs. So you still hold two dumbbells, but instead of using both legs to go down, you only use one leg. And I'll tell you what, I haven't done this movement in a while. The hamstring and glute contraction is pretty intense. Like I already did my four sets and uh, I'll tell you what, I'm already feeling it. So now I'm gonna move on to Bulgarian split squats and uh, I'm already feeling pretty fatigued. So this should be, this should be good. This is, this workout's going well. Definitely not a pool day today. It's been cold here in South Carolina. Definitely, I don't think they've ever closed down the pool. Well, workout's done. Got a good workout in. Actually, I'm really happy with it. Man, I uh, my legs are jello. Glutes, hamstrings, quads, the leg extension felt really good. Man, I was actually surprised on that because, I don't know, I haven't done leg extensions in a while. And to be honest, most leg extension machines, I just, it like puts too much pressure on my patella tendon or just doesn't feel right. So I don't, I don't really like them anymore. I just don't do them. And uh, you know, using a, just a, a basic cable machine, it's not a fancy Cybex leg extension or anything, but it felt really good. Um, I think I did four, or I ended up doing four or five sets. Then I did the standing leg curl, felt decent. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that workout. You know, when I woke up this morning, it, uh, it's been cold here, which, mind you, it's been like in the low 30s, which I mean, I'm from New York, so that's like winter. That's, for, that's like November through April, it's like 30 degrees. But here in South Carolina, it's like I've already, I think I've gotten soft to temperature because it's, the, we the, the weather's so nice. Um, like for example, it's like 30, it was 30 this past weekend, today's Monday, and uh, this weekend's gonna be 70, like right back to what it was. I mean, last week it was, there was like 70 degree days, so it's, you know, it's, it's just very temporary. Uh, but anyway, it was cold, I woke up early, wanted to get my workout done early, and uh, there was a part of me that, that didn't want to do it. I was like, shit, you know, I could always, I could push this off, go this afternoon, you know, but that's not what I wanted to do. I, woke, I, I specifically wanted to wake up early and get my workout done, so then I had the rest of the day to devote to work and stay focused and, uh, you know, it's about little victories. The little victory was waking up and getting my ass to the gym. And I'm gonna feel better for it now, now that I have it out of the way and I can go on with my day. Four egg whites, two whole eggs, making my breakfast after the gym. I had a Quest bar before I worked out. I was just coming up with, just doing the math in my head. It's crazy. I had to add eggs for breakfast. Pretty much consistently, I'm 25 years old, consistently for the last 10 years. It's insane. Every single day, I won't say every single day, but I would say 
well over 95% of every day for the last 10 years. It's insane. It's crazy. But that's why I make the best eggs. The best scrambled eggs in the world. How's that oatmeal? Is it good? Lucy and I eat eggs and oatmeal together every single morning. She likes to eat her oatmeal while the eggs cook.